There's been a lot more controversy than we would like. The, 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 the Jackson interview. How did it happen? You know, the Michael Jackson interview is an interview that we have been working on for more than a year. Uh, last February, I was out at Neverland. We had been working on it for some months at that time. I went out with my crews, my producer, associate producer, sat down with Michael, just the two of us in a room, left everybody outside and talked for about a half an hour. Months ago. Oh, this is last February, almost a year ago. And Michael said, fine, I'm going to trust you. Uh, and he told me how his trust had been betrayed by other journalists. And I just said, look, you know me, you know my work. If you want to do this, fine. If not, I understand. And he said, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to go upstairs and get ready for the interview. His guys told me that that could take an hour and a half to two hours because he'd have to get made up and he'd have to get his clothes. I mean, when I talked to him, he still had on, well, he had on a pajama top. He had pants on, but he had a pajama top on. And this is the day of the interview or this months the before day, the interview? This, this is, is the day of, of February. The... We were okay. going to do this interview that day. I see. So I say to my guys, bring in the camera gear, set it up, we'll do this interview, he'll be down in an hour or so. And as I was told later, when he was just about made up and dressed, someone came in with a phone and said, you've got a call from Marlon Brando in London. Brando told him that the deposition, which had been sealed in 1992 from the first case when he was accused of child molestation. And settled settled out of court so that it would all be kept secret. Brando told him that that deposition had been released. It was on the internet and it would be all over the world by tomorrow and it would be in the tabloids in the United States the next day. Michael Jackson freaked out. We never saw him again. He didn't say I'm not going to do the interview. He just disappeared. Someone came and told you? We sat there for hours waiting, and it's his people. Mark Garagos had just started as the head of his legal team at that time. This was before the charges were brought oh, yes. out, way before. In fact, the, the kid who was now charging him and his mother were there that day. Really? And we sat in the kitchen having coffee and donuts and sodas, and his mother and the kid said they were willing to go on television to say what a great person wow. Michael Jackson Hold it right was. There. And Brando was wrong, right? Well, no, because the deposition... Was it released? It was released, and it was all over the tabloids the next, the next day. Oh, wasn't yeah. it? We'll be right back with more. This is a fascinating story with Ed Bradley. Don't go away. We're back with Ed Bradley. All right, then what happened? All right, you lose that time. And then well, it, you know, we, we sat there, and he just never showed up. By that night, I went back to Los Angeles. Uh, we went back out uh, the next day and, and talked to them, and it just never happened. Um, so it just, we, we, it never went away completely. It was always there. Uh, and then when it surfaced again after uh, these charges were made, he decided that he wanted to talk to me. Um, so, so he contacted you? <laughs> we ha were in contact with uh, Mark Garagos, who was his lawyer. Um, and they said, okay, we didn't talk to Michael directly. Uh, they said, fine, come out on Wednesday. This is the day before uh, Christmas. So I had my Christmas vacation plans, and they just went out the window. And I flew to Los Angeles um, and went to the hotel where we were supposed to interview him. And they said, this is going to happen at 3 o'clock. And then they said, 4 then they said five, then they said six, and at seven they said, well, it'll happen tomorrow. So the next day was Christmas. Again. Here we go again. It was Christmas Day. So Christmas Day we went out and set up again, uh, and then again it was a long wait through the day, and late in the afternoon, early evening, Michael came into the room. He was made up and dressed for the interview, and um, he was very... He's very soft-spoken, hmm. and he is on the surface very considerate of everyone else in the room. Makes eye contact, says hello to members of the crew, waves at everybody, and sits down. Personable. Yeah, and but but then he's also checking to see how he looks in the monitor. You know, he, you know, he is a performer. You know, as he has been all of his life. Now, right there, the the story that appears in the New York Times is he says. 
first we have to make this deal. Oh, we no. need the money more on the, yeah. my television show. Never happened. Nothing like that. Never the happened. New York Times story was completely, completely wrong. wrong. Completely wrong. The New York Times story, which was based on something that happened a year ago in February when we were at Neverland, that this person said, we have to have more money for Michael. Oh, that was And, and the quote was put in my mouth in the New York Times story saying, uh, I said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. Now, who said I said that? The person they attributed that quote to was described as a disgruntled, former Jackson associate, unnamed, who felt that he was owed money. Now, that's not a very credible source. What bothered me was that they never contacted me directly to say, did you say that? And never called you. Well, no, they called the see by, by the time they were ready to write their story, we had finished the interview, I had gone on vacation. They called the CBS PR people and said, can we talk to Bradley? Bradley's on vacation. They never said, here is a quote. This is what they're saying Ed Bradley said. How does he respond to that? Back to a year ago, a year ago, back in February, when they didn't do it. Right. Did he say at that time, I want more money? No. Did he say, you must run my, I'm doing a special, you must run it? No, this was the year before the special. The special hadn't even no, been thought of. the special of. hadn't been thought of. So money I was mean, maybe it had been thought of, but I didn't know about money it. Was it never hadn't been shot. Money was never money mentioned. Money was not a factor. So what, what happened a year ago was that when Marlon Brando told him that the deposition was being made public, he freaked out, and he didn't want to see anyone. Yeah. So when you read the story, what did you think? I said, it's a lie. I never said that. Who, who was the person who said I said that? Name him. Were you shocked that the New York Times ran that? You know... I mean, here's a pillar of journalism. I, I expected more from the New York Times, frankly. I mean, if, if I had a quote from an anonymous source for a story I'm doing at 60 Minutes... I couldn't use that quote without contacting the person who was quoted in that story and saying, this is what they say about you. We couldn't do that. To your knowledge, is there any contact between CBS Entertainment and CBS News where entertainment could say, do us a we'll do quid pro quo, like the there, NBC there, there, letter no, we read? No, there, there, there is no quid pro quo. There was no quid pro quo with Michael Jackson. Les Moonves has said, CBS did not pay for the interview. CBS did not sweeten the pot. In other words, CBS did not say, okay, we paid you so much for the special, do the interview and we'll pay you a little more for the special. Never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Now, was there someone there from CBS Entertainment? Yes, because he knew Michael Jackson, having done the special with him, and knew Michael Jackson's people, and he was a liaison with us. Were they but he not, had nothing to do with the interview. Were they not going to run the special unless, you, unless he did the interview? I don't think they were going to run the special unless he answered the questions. Now, it was his choice as to where he chooses, which forum he chooses to answer the question. Now, would they prefer that he do it on 60 Minutes? You bet. Back to last February when you met the mother and the kid. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you heard it was that mother and that kid? I was stunned because they were there to tell me that day what a great person he was. Were you going to put him on camera? We hadn't gone that far. Mm -hmm. I mean, Might I, you have? I, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, the, the, you know, I don't know. The kid was in the, the documentary that uh, mm -hmm. the... the the BBC, the, the, yeah. the, not the BBC, but the English program did. Uh, I forget his name now. But you were shocked that the... Martin Bashir. That yeah. the kid, that was the kid. I was shocked that that was the kid because both the child and his mother were praising Michael and were sitting there in his kitchen eating and saying what a great person he was.